Every time you enter a command on the terminal on the command line, that gets stored in a history.txt file that you can then look up later. Adwin then is what happens when you take that history.txt file and you dump it into a SQL Lite database and sync it across your computers. On the right-hand side here, we have what happens when you by default hit Control R. You get a reverse history search. Now, I don't use bash that much anymore. So when I type something like code, it will come up with some result that I set up many months or years ago. And we're capable of navigating through this using command P, command N, whatever we want to do, going through our history uh, forwards and backwards, basically. If I type the word history, we can see a dump of our history, which is exactly the same contents that are in the history file. This becomes more obvious if I cat my bash history. It's just a file with all of the commands listed in the order that I made them. You can contrast that with what happens when I use Atwin. If I hit Control R to look through my history, I get in the bottom left what's called a global search. This is global across all of the systems that I've set up and synced Atwin on. We'll get to what that means. But suffice it to say that if I search for code here, then I get a bunch of results, anything that includes the word code. If I put the little like beginning caret for searching for code at the beginning of a line, then I get a bunch of results. And since I imported my old new shell history about a day ago, a lot of these are timestamped a day ago. But for example, one of these is timestamped six hours ago at the bottom. We can navigate through this history. On the left-hand side, we have numbers above our currently selected line. And if for some reason I wanted to use code day 10, I hit enter. That comes back to my terminal. And now I can reuse something that I typed in the past that I found with a rich fuzzy search from a history that is stored in a SQLite database. So that's the selling point of Atwin. Atwin is a SQLite database for that history that is encrypted at rest and synced between your computers. Now, anytime we talk about sort of sending the data that you enter into a terminal into some cloud service or whatever, we have to talk about, is that code open source? Can you audit it? Yes, it is. Or I probably wouldn't be talking about it on this channel. It's end-to-end -end encrypted, and it doesn't seem like anybody involved with the project actually wants your data anyway. And you do get extra context about your commands when you do this. So you get things like runtime or exit code, for example. Again, there is a service involved that you don't have to use, but you probably will if you use Atwin. You can self-host it, which we'll cover a little bit later, but self-hosting is mostly easy if you know how to use Docker. And if you don't know how to use Docker, then it will be incredibly complicated for you. Can they read your shell history in this service? No, because Atwin is end-to-end -end encrypted and they're very forward about the encryption they use and what it is, and you can read more about it. Atwin supports a number of shells, including Bash, ZSH, Fish, and my shell, New Shell. Getting started is pretty easy. You basically have to install Atwin, do a small bit of configuration, and then optionally sign up for the service and sync your data. The install scripts, as is tradition in software, use a curl pipe to bash method. So if you're interested in what this script does, uh, click the link and go read it. I've already read it. And after you have Atwin installed, you need to register, import any history that you want to import, and then sync it. On Homebrew, the install is fairly easy. So if you don't want to use the script, you can use brew install Atwin. You are then responsible for setting up the actual integration with your shell yourself. So for example, new shell is uh, make this directory dot local share Atwin, where it saves some config files and stuff. And then Atwin init new, we pipe basically what is a file and we save it to local share at win in it.new. And then in our config.new, we have to set up sourcing that file. So if I open that config file, it's not super interesting. Atwin does need to integrate with your shell itself. So it needs some kind of like hook before it renders the terminal prompt and hook to actually record your history when you type into it. There are a couple of configuration options that you can use uh, that I'm just gonna skip over right now. The most important interaction method of working with Atwin is that it replaces control R and it replaces the up arrow. So if you control R, you get this nice UI that you can control C out of. And if you hit up, you get the same by default. And then of course, in my config.new, I'm just sourcing that file, which is the same kind of thing that you'll have to do for other shells. Back in the getting started, you do need to register if you're going to sync your data between computers with their service. This involves giving a username and an email, and then it'll ask you for a password as well. Import any history that you want to import. You don't have to import any of your old history if you don't want to. I don't know how I feel about having imported my old history because you'll notice that uh, the history that I imported here at the top is all labeled as happening a day ago. 
because there is no date time information in the history file. So I think that'll balance out over time. The further I get from that import date, the less relevant it'll be. But I think personally, I probably would have started from scratch here. You also get to opt into kind of a silly GitHub style activity graph. It doesn't include any of the data that you have imported. So if you import your shell history because it doesn't have any of that date time information or probably doesn't, then you won't get anything in your history. So I imported yesterday, you can see a big green square. And then the day after that is kind of like very light because all of my commands are for that day. The token you get back from this command is not sensitive. It's just there to prevent user enumeration. So I think there's a couple of commands that are useful to go over, the major ones being search and stats. If I type at win search limit five code, then I get back a list of results and timestamps and execution times for each of those things. So code dot for open VS code in the current directory took 135, 132 milliseconds. And we have some customization options over the output. So in this case, I've got the timestamp as well as the execution time on the left-hand side. Because I'm using new shell, you can use this to dump that data into a table and then continue to process it with new shell. For example, if I wanted to turn this table into JSON and further process it later, I could do that with the two JSON. So it spits out something that's roughly a tab separated value uh, with no header. And then I just dumped that out to JSON. And then I would just be responsible for also renaming these columns if I wanted to do that. And you might say why like search is nice, but why do we need it? We already have like control R and up arrow for the nice GUI. And to that, I would say basically you could do at win search inside of something like, for example, Alfred, if you wanted to. So it enables the integration with uh, other tools. And then there's at win stats, which is kind of interesting. My usage yesterday was kind of light. So we've got a lot of clear CD. I messed around with at win a bit, get checkout, get clone, that kind of thing. But you get stats about every command that you used and whatever time frame you want to use. And it comes in in human readable output. So basically, if I wanted stats from yesterday, I could do at win stats yesterday and I get this. And if I want at win stats two days ago, which includes my import, by the way. So this is all of the history that I imported that day. S being something that's roughly equivalent to get status for me. Uh, a lot of cargo run because I have cargo run a lot. And your typical CDs, LS, get ads, rip grep, etc. So finally, the other thing that I want to mention is that you get to search in a very rich way. So we open the history search with control R, right? And you can see that I typed clear about 19, 20, 21 seconds ago and so on. You also see which commands succeeded and failed. So I typed something like GCO dash B SQL X 0.7 here. And that failed because I don't actually have uh, the GCO alias set up right now because I was messing around with stuff. So I had to then write git checkout dash B SQL X 0.7 for one for a workshop that I'm working on. If we hit control R again, we go from global in the bottom left to host. And this is moving from everything that I have synced with that twin to just this computer. If I hit it again, we get just this session. So just what I've typed into this terminal window. And if we go further, we get just the things that I've typed into this directory. So in this case, there's a creates directory here. If I CD into creates and I control R and I go into the directory, I won't get anything. But if maybe I type LS and then I go to the directory, LS shows up in the output because I just typed it in this directory and Atwin knows where I executed these commands. You can open up the interactive search by using dash I, so you can integrate with any scripts that you want to, write whatever function you want to, and then drop into Atwin search to get some result interactively if you want to. And like I said, if you don't wanna use the Atwin service, you can self-host. You need to know how to use Docker and how to run a Postgres database, or you need to find some place that can run Docker for you and run a Postgres database for you. And that's it for Atwin today. I have been really enjoying it, actually. I think it's a nice upgrade to my history search. It gives me a little bit more power over finding commands that I've used in the past or maybe used yesterday afternoon or things that have failed and whatnot. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I will catch you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.